welcome back uh, today's video is about synthesis flow details so far we look at the higher level synthesis flow uh, what are the what are the different inputs and outputs of synthesis flow what we are going to look into this video is some of the stages or some of the steps within the flow within the gate level synthesis flow flow is for those who are brand new whenever i say flow flow means what are different commands in design compiler or in any tool that you run uh, one after another one what is the sequence of command what is the sequence of the things that you have to do to take an rtl and go all the way to converting that into an atlist so the flow or the set of commands they come from the vendor for example design compiler examples i've been giving here which is synopsis tool so you, you read the documentation of design compiler you talk to synopsis they will give you a skeleton flow a basic flow they will tell you first you need to do this then this then this and then that and all that okay and reference flow is or reference sequence of command is always your first point to start. That's where you start. But then based on your design, uh, for example, basic flow will say you can read files something like this. Uh, then let's say you have 50 files and another project have 30 files. Okay, how to read them? And Sometimes you need to do some specific optimization on those designs. So that's where the flow of one team, one block, or one company might be different to the other one. So let's look into all those different stages or different steps within the flow, and then you will understand better and I will give you examples. Okay, here the flow can be different. So the flow that I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start very simple. Sorry if, you, if, if the sound is not that great. I'm in a room where a lot of uh, echo come in. Um, so in, in the basic flow, I'm not going to use DFT. So let's keep the DFT aside for a moment. Our goal is what we did last time. Okay, here is the input RTL. That will come into our flow or set of commands. We will run different set of commands and we will generate a netlist. So this example, I will explain you first just the stages and the purpose of each stage and what is done at each, each stage. And then I will use some of the exact command from design compiler. Uh, how in design compiler you can do it and you can read that you can find design compiler user guides from synopsis or they will be available on internet and you can learn those so i think putting exact file now to tell you all the command exactly uh, i just put here maybe my syntax is not correct but you always need to check them exactly from the synopsis manual but the goal here is okay just for you to see how this is done in one particular tool cadence other tools or open open source will have something similar their way will be different their commands will be different but overall it's the same theme same concept of different stages so let's get started so what typically do and i'll use this uh, design command example so first of all you have a unix shell in the unix shell you need to have a setup of the tool so right now i'm talking about this setup of the tools and the how to you set up the tool, those instructions come from the vendor. So for design compiler, we have you set up the uh, tool, then you point to the right license, and then you invoke the tool with the DC shell. Okay. So now I am in when the DC shell open, you can you get a shell, special shell, like a sh shell type. You, you get a command line where you can type different commands. Or what you can also do is you can type GUI and you will open the GUI and you will do manually everything GUI. GUI is typically done when you want to debug something but the flows are typically written in a Unix command way. That is good because you can call those files, automate a lot of things and so that you can fire those runs on number of RTL. GUI is a more of a manual thing, it's not automation. These things are a lot of automation done. You, sometimes you don't want people to just sit there and run one command after another one. You put it in a file and then you can tell the tool, hey, take that file and execute everything in it. 
and that's called automation. So always we are, we are required to create more automation so that the person who is running it, the basic set of commands once is written, those are there, you can run them, but later on you can spend more time on analysis of the thing. That's where the humans can add more value in it. And you use tools for more automation. So once you get into DC shell, you have to set up few things. Uh, here I put example. So, so for example, okay, all the commands that I write, they will be in tickle format. Tickle is the language. And when I talk about a tickle shell in synopsis, there are some additional commands which are not part of the basic tickle, but this is called a synopsis tickle. Because, and I'll show you some examples. Um, so for example, when you come inside, and assuming your DC shell, you have license and everything goes, you get a shell. So you, there's different variables. I will do a tickle tutorial, quick one, as a separate video at some point. But right now you can understand that the way in tickle you define a variable is uh, you put the variable, you, this is a keyword set, this is um, the variable and then the value after that you put, um, you know, if you use these uh, commas, anything inside will go to search path as is. Okay, and I'll, I'll give you more example, just think of that. Um, search path is the location inside the Unix, the directories, where all your designs are. And later on we will see when we read multiple files, uh, and if you don't want to give exact path, then tool always search in that folder. Okay? It's assumed that things are within that folder underneath some subfolders. So here is an important couple of variables. Again, I'm not gonna mention all the variables and everything, uh, but this will, they will give you an idea, okay, now after this, go back, open design compiler manual or cadence, um, genus, genus, is it genus or genus, um, or other tool, and look at what command they suggest in setup. So key thing in the setup is setting pointer to your target library. So this is that standard cell library. That is the library that your RTL will be mapped towards. Next video, if I don't complete this in one video, probably be it's somewhere down the line that video is coming where I will explain you standard cell. I'll do a video or two where I will explain, explain you how things are mentioned inside standard cell, what information is there, how you get that information. So that thing is coming up. So for now, just remember that there is a standard cell library and we need a pointer to that and that variable keeps that. I, I remember mentioning that another set of libraries are called link libraries. These are the designs in, in these are sub design in your main design that you haven't finished. Those are already finished. For example, memories, macros and all those things. And all you do is you need to have those to create, to link your design, to, to link these libraries to those uh, places and that way what happens is you are able to have complete that design we will look at an example you will understand more but right now all you need to know is there's a there's a link libraries there are target libraries and those are the variables you put all those pointers to libraries again this video is not a, a way to explain every sentence but there are sometimes and you can always do a man pages help pages um, of these one to know okay what value you need to give how to put spaces between them what this static means you need to give exact location or not but all this is part of a setup so go if you go open the tool documentation you need to learn how to create a proper setup you got that okay so after you do setup the next thing you do is now you are ready to read a design uh, in our example, we have just one file that is a full adder. Remember this file that we have over here. So and again, let's start simple and then we will add more complexities on top of that. So if you have only one file and that is in very log, then you have this command read very log. But if you have a system very log, then you mention read file, dash format, s very log, and then you give the point. The whole idea is you, there should be a command which through which you read the RTL into the memory, you know. So this command gives that. Now if you have 50 of those files, 
you will run these commands 50 times or sometimes you will give them and you put them in, in a variable so that tool knows how to again all those details are very tool specific and that's where the tool and my videos are uh, tool independent so but you need to find how to read your design in that vendor tool shell okay once you read rtl next stage is you do elaboration and what does elaboration do the goal of elaboration is that now you have let's say full mug full adder there it's loaded now you elaborate as you want tool to check if the syntax of system very log if different semantics you know you haven't declared uh, you have declared a signal properly um, uh, some of those tricky things are you know some of the other things that you are really checking even when syntax is fine for example if you are um, uh, giving a, a blocking and non-blocking statements are the, the always calm something like that uh, so those things are checked and also it also checks maybe you have one module that you're calling as a reference its pins don't match to the instantiated one also oh, the instantiated one and reference they don't match things like those okay so all that is checking in elaboration so all the messages that you're getting from the tool and the warnings are super important that you pay attention you look at okay what is tool is tool telling me something maybe one of the thing i have just remembered now there was if there are as i mentioned in system very log training that you don't want to have unintentional inferred ledges something like that will be there it will be uh, put in the warning so these are important warnings that you need to be looking um, after and once you do elaborate and of course there is a way so for example you you do this you, my current design is full adder and link that design i mean in, in our case this is not much required because we don't have any sub design but when you have sub design through the link we just make sure that there's a link between the link library and whatever instance you have in the RTL design okay and then you do elaborate and that's where this thing is done so after elaborate now you have an intended database which was previous previously just RTL but tool is going to convert that into another internal database so all these databases are stored in the memory when you are part of the tool it's stored as what you call a GTAC conversion so these are it's not in the form of a standard cell but like standard cell once you use them let's say you're using a process node from tsmc in 22 nanometer or intel 22 nanometer the reference cells names and all the character cells are different so that means you are not targeting a particular library particular process node but when you mention gtag type of thing it's we're gonna say oh there is an end game there's an R game. it's not gonna say exactly which cell from which particular process node which label it is it's like a process independent conversion a gtag okay so once that is done now it's, it's as built kind of internal database and another important thing the last thing before i finish this video because I feel like there's no way i can finish all the stages in one video that after any major step you can save whatever information you have already done and you can write out in a particular format for example design compile there was a ddc it's a binary format you can open and see but once you have written here let's say your shell crashes or you were not planning on doing further thing because those are not ready but you save it because next time what you do is you start from here you load that database as opposed to doing everything again okay so saving databases in the form of some data format whatever that tool gives you is super important let's stop this video here already lengthy so we have set up we have read rtl we have elaboration stage we produce a gtag and conversion so in the next video we will start with a very important and interesting state and that is applying constraints. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye.